fall all apart there. I, I, I literally am, yeah. It's not your fault, they fall So, it is now the second day of Florida Drupal Camp. People have made it in. Yeah. So this presentation is about Chrome Developer Tools, and uh, it's kind of about what I wish I knew several years ago. And I have like a lot of different tips and tricks and stuff. It's gonna be, it's gonna be mostly um, demos. So this is me. My name is Mike Herschel. I'm a front end developer at Lullabot. If you don't know, if you haven't heard of Lullabot, Lullabot's like a design and digital agency. We've worked on big sites like the Grammys and MSNBC. Uh, I'm gonna be looking at SciFi.com a little bit later because there's a lot of animations going on there. Does anybody remember Firebug? Like you work on it? Yeah. <laughs> so Firebug was revolutionary when it came out. You know, it enabled you to, you, you downloaded an extension for Firefox and then you, you enabled you to select the element and then edit the CSS and it was so awesome. Before you had to like type in your CSS like outline one pixel red to see where that was and what it was doing and if you needed to apply clear fixes and all that type of crap and it was it was so difficult but you know we made it work because that's what we did so yeah we're gonna do it live my Twitter handles this and this is uh, this is like the whole doing it live right here so watch watch the guy this guy here oh, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So this is gonna be this presentation right here because like presentations <laughs> Alright, All right, so let's do it live, right? So let's look at Florida Drupal Camp. We're gonna pick on this, we're gonna pick on the Sci-Fi Networks website, click on this. Um, all right, so Chrome Developer Tools. There's a couple different ways to get into it. Like, obviously, you can right click and go to inspect, what a lot, uh, is what a lot of people do. There's, um, if you hit con Command Shift D, you're in a Mac, uh, Command Shift D, it'll, it's a little shortcut if it works. Yeah, okay. Alt Shift D. This is how this presentation is going to go. <laughs> so anyway, just imagine I opened it up and it would automatically kind of select stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to pull through some of these um, <coughs> some of these tabs right here. Can, this is kind of low for people in the back, right? Wonder how I'm going to do this. You can change the. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. You can put it on the side. One of the one of the little shortcuts that that's useful is. Uh, Command Shift D, and you can kind of go back and forth. Um, I'll try to work on the side a little bit. Some of it's going to require on the, on the bottom. Um, so we're going to go through through these tabs right here, and I'm going to tell you guys where uh, I do a lot of my work and um, some of the stuff. Like I have a favorite tab, the uh, the timeline tab. I'm going to tell you how to use that, how to profile your website how to identify issues and stuff like that. So let's kind of get started. Um, before, actually, before we get started, let me take a quick, quick survey. Who all considers themselves front-end developers? Cool. Uh, Back-end developers. Cool. Who's here just like to hang out? <laughs> That's cool too, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome to be here. All right, so Working with the elements tab here, I'm going to kind of just show some common workflow and then we're going to kind of maybe show so, some little tips and tricks, right? So um, I, spend a, I spend probably a good 60% of my time when I'm in DevTools in the elements tab. What you do is you typically hit this little uh, selector mouse thing over here, pointer thing, and at that point you can select elements. And from here you can start changing changing their styles you know so color red um, you know font size you know 3ms or something like that and you can you can kind of get in there um, another thing that you can do um, is start uh, is, is ch start changing around classes right so like um, if I select the body class or the body element right here you can see I have like a not front and not logged in I can hit this like little plus right here you know that creates a new element I can hit the class 
and I can say add front, and you can see if I add front, it starts adding, it starts changing around the layout, you know? Um, or you can remove stuff just by toggling it, which is nice. Um, so you can see stuff kind of going around like that. You can add hover states to something pretty easily right here. So um, I don't know if there's a hover state on this, but I can right click on this, I can go to hover. And if there was a hover state, it, it, would, uh, it would activate. You could do the same thing with uh, focus states right here. Um, something that's really useful is like, if there's an element that you don't even know where it is, like say this element, and like let's say it's hidden behind the Z index, you're trying to find it, you can actually right click on this and go to scroll into view, and it'll actually bring it down. That's like a little tip right there that sometimes is, is useful. Um, I showed uh, this tip yesterday uh, in, the, in the lightning sessions, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show how to set breakpoints within the, within the DOM. And so you see how when I'm at, um, I'm toggling out this mobile menu right here, it's changing the CSS class right here. And you can see I can also toggle it like that. But say I want to go, I want to find the JavaScript w where that's added, right? So. Um, what I can do is I can right click on this, I can break on, and I can, I can do a couple different things. I can do subtree modifications, which is anything underneath that element, attribute modifications, or if it's being removed. So we'll do attribute modifications since we can see that the attributes are, attributes are being modified, right? So next time we open this up, it's going to break and it's going to tell me exactly where it's happening right here, which is pretty neat. So that's that's like a pretty a, a, a pretty cool thing right here. Um, let's go ahead and go back to the elements tab, and we'll remove that. Um, working when you have stuff highlighted, like a lot of times, it's trying to. You, um, if you, if you look down, let me move this up right here. It's, this is all behind me, but. If you look down here and you're trying to figure out where um, where a style is coming from, you can actually go to uh, you can go over here to the filters, which is, which a lot of times will be below, and you can actually click right here or or, or start typing the filter. So I want to say color, and I want to see where's the color coming from right here. So I can see the color is coming from the color is set right here. And I can actually click on the CSS. It'll take me to the CSS to where it is. You can see that the CSS is minified right here. If you ever run into minified uh, CSS in JavaScript, you can click these little curly brackets down here. Yes. Does everybody see where they are? Uh -huh. And it will magically fix it for you. Ah. Oh, yeah. You can just stop right now. Why did I never click that? I don't know, yeah. Like, so, um, this is, I'm sorry, this is a good way when you have your information scattered out over four or five different files, this is a good way to find where it is. Exactly, exactly. Because whatever file it's in, it'll take you there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, that's good. CSS and JavaScript, they're, they're, they're uh, obviously there's uh, from some kind of caching or something because nobody's naming their CSS underscore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This right here is aggregated CSS up here. You know, How do you I, get it to where you know the real? Well, there's really no way because the aggregated CSS uh, strips up the comments mm -hmm. yeah. and it just minifies it. So like, you don't know. You have to turn off yeah. aggregation. Yeah, you have to basically have to turn off Drupal aggregation. Um, but this will get you. This will, but if you're working on your local development environment, you, you turn that off. All right, so we're still in the elements tab. We're still in the first tab, people. <laughs> Event listeners, you can, you can like I don't know if you guys saw like last night. I, I had my silly sounds right like. Yes. That was very cool. Thank you. Why am I playing music? No, but it's lovely. Yeah, but that was on my phone. I don't know where the hell that's coming from. <laughs> Maybe it's from the camp site. It's like not even like any music. I don't listen to this type of music. Maybe it's from the camp site. Something else. Yeah. If you want to do it, I'm going to have several of our crew. 
Uh, I'm like honestly like curious, like where is this coming from? <laughs> Someone, someone's just effing with me. So, <laughs> so imagine it's like saying words, right? <laughs> oh man, I don't even know where I was going with this. Um, let's see. Oh, event listeners, right? What's that? Oh yeah, look at yeah, it's me. This. No. Usually it has a little yeah, more. Oh, it does, yeah, it has a speed. Hold on, just stop. Oh. Huh. Right, let's remove this. B-I-G, M-A-C, get it, B-I-G. Is it a safari? What the hell is playing this? <laughs> no, it is. It's probably one of those embedded videos you get on the page. Like uh, maybe maybe it might have been Safari. Or you could just close the sci-fi down. But I don't think it's I have to mute it up here. Yeah. 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 yeah I got it. Alright, now it's working. Alright. So <laughs> event listeners, right? So um you can click on the event listeners tab and you can kind of see event listeners. Right now, like this is something bare bones that build right here built right here. But you can see that you can see the event listener that I have right here, and I can click in here, and I can kind of see what it's doing. You can see I have a DOM content loaded event listener to like do stuff when actually everything's kind of loaded. Um, that's kind of useful when you're starting to look around at like right now. This is very basic, but if you look around at more uh, complex sites, you can kind of deconstruct them pretty good. What else do we have in here? DOM breakpoints. I don't even use that. I don't know what that is. Um, yeah. Um, all right. So what else do we have in Element? Oh, a couple other things I want to do. I'm going to hit the Escape button when I'm in DevTools right here, and it's going to open up the. Um, it's going to open up the console at the bottom. You can see right now we're having that we have like a custom font, and for no reason it's not able to parse it. It'll. Uh, let's talk about some options in here. So I'm going to. I'm gonna, so we have a console open right now. Right, so from here, like you can typically look at like the, the Drupal object and you can start, like the Drupal object is created by Drupal to kind of pass settings through and kind of manage manage JavaScript. A um, couple of things that you can do, you can do console.table, uh, an object. And it'll actually uh, I'll put stuff in and I'll, I'll, I'll put stuff in the table, which is pretty pretty neat. Um, so you're just typing that in console? Yeah. Yes, I am. And um, I don't know if you guys can see. I'm trying to get. I like how proud you sounded when you said that. Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> so, uh, like, if if you have an array, you can just format your array in the table and and, and, and look at it pretty easily. So um, network conditions, you can you can throttle your network, right? So you can see um, th there's a couple different ways to do that, but you can see, see how, how it behaves. Yeah, see how it behaves on, on different on different yes. networks. Like there should be an entry in here for FTC student. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, right, um you just pull it offline. Yeah. Add yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can add you can add custom presets in there. Um, so one of my favorite things right here is, is called paint flashing. And um, to understand paint flashing and layer borders, you need to understand how a browser renders web pages. Um, so bear with me as I explain this like really shittily. Um, your browser will download HTML, it will download assets. At that point, <coughs> it will create uh, the document object model, which is the DOM. So that's like. Um, Actually, is it either? It, it creates the document object model and the CSS object model. The document object model is just basically the uh, everything, all, all the HTML that's downloaded. Uh, the CSS object model is basically like a tree of the CSS. It combines that, I think, to form. Uh, to form, I, I think it forms a DOM. So I, the, the first term is I have is wrong. So it, it it does layout where it actually like starts spitting stuff out the page. And at that point, it will start painting. So when painting is where it actually like says this color is red, it's 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 writing the images, it's moving stuff around, it's calculating opacity and stuff like that. Um, when it does painting, uh, 
depending on how your web page is laid out, you can have multiple la what's called layers, and you can think of layers like almost like Photoshop. So you know, you know, when you're using like Photoshop or an image editor, you can move like different layers around and kind of move them around. And at the end, uh, there's a step called compositing, and compositing is when it basically gets put onto your screen. Now, painting is a very expensive operation that <coughs> happens on your computer CPU while compositing is a very cheap operation because it happens on the GPU. The GPU is like kind of like a sub-processor that does uh, mostly like math type operations and beyond that I'm not, I don't exactly, I can't explain it. Um, so when you're doing animation you typically want to uh, minimize the painting and maximize the compositing. And if you do that your site will be really smooth. Have you ever gone to a parallax site and it's like you're scrolling down, it's like like that, mm -hmm. and it's it's so annoying and it seems like it's slowing down your whole computer. It's because it's painting as opposed to compositing, and that's that's more difficult for your computer to do. So by highlighting highlighting <coughs> highlighting paint flashing right here, uh, you'll actually see when the paints are going on. So this paint right here, it's painting as it's moving right here. And we could probably fix that, and I could, I could show you how to do that, and I, I will later. Um, you can also uh, show layer borders. Right now, it doesn't look like we have, you'll, if you see these lines right here, you'll, uh, you'll see blue lines and orange lines. Let's open up sci-fi right here. So the orange lines are the actual uh, border layers that you're going to want to, or the layer borders that you're going to want to pay attention to. And as stuff moves around, you're going to see those 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 layers move around. If, like on this site right here, you don't see that and you're animating stuff, it's it's a it, it can lead to a performance uh, problems. Now in this case, like no one's ever going to notice because we're just basically opening and sliding the menu, but you know you can. Uh, so if I do paint flashing, we could probably fix this. Um, so, so you can see how that does it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. Uh, and you can see it's, uh, yeah, this is a right here, position fixed. I can type, so, so there's a couple of ways to uh, minimize the, the painting to promote it to its own layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type back face visibility hidden. Now, back face visibility is a, um, it's a CSS property that has to do with, uh, um, like, if you turn stuff around, if you do 3, 3D, and if you do 3D stuff in CSS and you turn around, is the back, can you, is, can you see it? So now we're probably not going to see that. I guess we are. I wonder, uh, what are we animating here? Oh, because we're we're changing the width, I think. No. Yeah, whatever. I'm not gonna get in on this. But um, another s s something else that you're gonna want to do is like when you're animating stuff, you want to only uh, you typically want to concentrate in animating trans uh, transforms. So there's a couple ways to like position stuff around. Like you can use absolute positioning where you're doing like top left, you know, and um, or you can do margins or so or padding. And if you're animating those properties through JavaScript or something else, you're forcing repaints. If you do CSS transforms, so where you do transform, translate X, this, or transform, translate Y, this, or something like that, um, it's a lot more performant. It does a very similar thing, but you can promote that to its own layer, and it's a lot, lot cheaper to animate. Um, opacity is easy to animate also. Background color is hard to animate, because that will, of course, force a paint. I'm kind of getting off topic from DevTools, but it's uh, it's important stuff. Um, you can emulate print right here, which I like to do. Um, like, so say you're doing a print style sheet, you can do that right there and style your print style sheet. Um, the current project I'm on right now, that's important for some some projects. It's not important for. There's the FPS meter, which is frames per second. The maximum frames per second you're ever going to see in a perfect world is 60. Um, 
as you start moving stuff around, it's going to go lower. You want to typically endeavor to keep it above 30. If it's above 30, it, it seems pretty seamless. If it gets down lower than that, you're going to start noting some jankiness. Um, <coughs> sensors. You can do geolocation. You can change your geolocation. So I can change it to India or Shanghai. And then when uh, a website uses your the HTML5 um, geolocation API, you'll return false values. I've heard before that airlines will give uh, different ticket prices depending on where you are. So like maybe if you set yourself to like Central America or something like that, you might get something cheaper. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's true though, because they could also do like IP lookup with databases, and I don't know how they how they look at things. Yeah. Um, and you can search for kind of just like anything within here, you know, so I can search for color and find anything of color in here. Click in here and, uh, and here we go. You guys ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, How long did it take you to find that little curly back? <laughs> I, just randomly hitting it going no, I, I, I saw a tweet that showed how to do it, and I was like, holy, holy Jesus, this is awesome. <laughs> All right, let's move on to uh, questions. Okay, before you move off the elements, do you have a way of inserting, um, like a lot of times I'll just right click and paste in some HTML, test it out in, in the page, but do you have any way of, uh, I have trouble putting in like mock um, CSS before, like if you want to do like a pseudo before content on something, I haven't figured out how to place yeah, that can, in there. Yeah, you can do it like this. So you can like so if you have an element, say I like want to add like the pseudo element before to the snap element. Yeah. You can just click this like little plus, and it allows you to write your own selector. So at this point, you click in here and you just add the before in here, and then you also have to add, of course, the content okay. property, and then it'll create it. Right here, and then you can, you know, All right. do it like that. So, but you, you actually bring up a couple different things I forgot to talk about. So let me get rid of the layer borders right here. So another thing I, I use, um, oh, have you guys watched The Expanse yet? Yeah. It's the best sci-fi on TV. Like, seriously, it's the best. Um, so another thing that's that's really important is modeling is, is structuring your CSS so it can take into account users that attempt to destroy your website. So for example, like you might have mockups that assume you know your title is only going to be like 200 characters, but like what happens if it's 16,000 characters? All right, well you know Drupal can limit it, you know, but what happens if it's 500 characters or something like that? So something that I did here. Um, that I'm pretty proud of, right? So at the at the top up here <coughs> with the show, that's obviously variable data. We don't know what's coming in, right? So I'm gonna move this to the bottom. And we're gonna highlight this. So it has stuff like so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the contact in here. You can see I'm I double clicked in there and I'm just gonna start changing the content. How is this going to look, you know, if there's like Alamo versus Chupacabra versus Sharknado versus, you know, all this crap that sci-fi puts out, right? So let's kind of start messing around with it. So this looks okay right here, but what happens if we make it smaller? And you can see like right here I'm using like CSS ellipses. I'm, I'm, I'm using um, calc right here. So I'm using the max width with calc. 50 VW minus like a, a hard coded value. And um, I don't know if everybody can see that. <clears throat> right here. And so v if people are not familiar with VW units, VW units are supported, uh, VW and VH units are supported uh, in Internet Explorer 9 and above. And basically what it is is like 100 VW is the width, 100 VH is the height. So you can use those units wherever. So what I'm saying is, 50 VW, which is this, minus 350, that's the max width right there. And then like the VW units are gonna be relative to the browser, so as the browser gets smaller and larger, it's gonna automatically adjust itself so it doesn't look god awful ugly. You can kind of see how that does that right there. So that's, that's pretty neat. Um, <coughs> you can also, um, 
copy and paste elements in here. So, and, th and this is going to break the layout right here, but like say if I want to see like what if on the main menu right here they add three extra menu items, you know? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first list item, I'm going to hit Command C to copy it, select the parent item and paste it. And paste, you know? Oh, I think I made that. So I'm, I'm uh, am I deleting it or what? What are we doing here? Yeah. There you go. So it's it's you can do stuff, and that's something else that you can do is you can start dragging stuff around, right? So if I drag the shows, I can I can actually click on that and start dragging it down here, and that'll like give you an idea to, um, you know. It's an, it's an option to model your data. Like a lot of times if I'm working with a designer, like as a designer I'm working with, like I get, she gives me like designs for like kind of the minimum screen and the maximum screen. A lot of times I figure out the in-between like the tablet sizes myself. And if, but if I have questions, I get around a Google Hangout so I work remotely. And I'll sit in developer tools like this and I'll just start moving her stuff around and doing live editing. Do you like this? This is easy to do. Do you like this? This is easy to do. And it allows you to do stuff like that pretty easily. So yeah, elements tab. Anything, any more questions on elements tab? Uh, how do you keep track of all the changes that you've made on the tools? That's a really good question. Um, it's really hard to do. Chrome Canary, which is um, a version of Chrome that is always, I think, like two versions above, and you like, like canary. Um, this has an option to do that. I think it's like it creates a diff, but right, right now there's no changes written down, yeah. or at least if there is, it doesn't work well. Um, <coughs> all right, so. So when you change your geo, okay, then you hit enter, like you put yourself in. Yeah. Jakarta or whatever. It would remember that going in and coming back and you get the right response. Yeah. But yeah. Would it permanently always mark yourself as. No, it's to it's, it's just it's just temporary. As long as your dev tools are open, that checkbox is checked. Um, let's move on to the network tab. So, <laughs> bless you. So the network tab is pretty neat. Uh, let me hit refresh. So. Websites, as most of you probably know, are creations of like a whole bunch of different assets, right? So you can look at all these assets as they come in on the network tab. And typically, um, <coughs> the less assets that you have that you're giving, the quicker your website's going to be. There's a new protocol called uh, H2 that is can kind of mitigate that, but that's why you end up seeing like CSS files like this that are pushed all together. So you so instead of making one request, multiple requests to the server, you just make them one. Um, so let's kind of look at some things in here. So the first thing you can do is you can you can filter up here. So like say I want to look at images, or media, or fonts, or whatever else. I can I can easily look at that in here. You can also filter up here in this box right here. So. If you look down here, there's 105 requests right there. And this is actually, do I have my, yeah, I have my ad blocker on up here. I'm gonna do this without the ad blocker. So now we have 100, now we have 185 requests right here. So what I can do is I can, I, 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 I can use the domain right up here and I can say, www.sci-fi.com out of these 200, actually it came up to 230, out of the 230 requests only 50 of them for, were from my domain. NBC uses a lot of ad trackers and stuff like that which are kind of frustrating because it like affects the performance of the website. But you can do a lot of things like this filtering up here which is kind of interesting, you know. And it auto-completes for you. So you can see like all the stuff that's coming in. Um, all right, so uh, something else is if you hit this little thing for large request roles, and let's go up here. What? Which one did you click? I clicked on this. You see where my mouse is right here? What's interesting, I'm going to move this over here, and maybe 
you can make sure that you're going to see two values for the size right here. So if you see there's one, the one on the bottom says 112 kilobytes and the one on the top says 28.5. So what that is is the original size is 112, but when a browser sends data over the line, or no, when the server sends the data over the line, it should be g-zipping it, which is basically like zipping up the website, sending it down, and your browser unzips it, and it all happens. You don't even know it's happening. Sometimes you need to check. Like, if that's not enabled, you want to enable it. For Drupal 8, I don't think Drupal 8 uh, gzips SVGs by default, and it should, because uh, SVGs are just text documents, you know, that represent an image. So you can add that to your server's configuration file, your HD access file, or whatever you need to. Um, something that I really like doing is um, sorting. Like these are these are sortable uh, column uh, sortable columns up here. So you can see the largest uh, the largest one up here is like half a megabyte. It's pretty large, but if you look at the website, it's like visually, you know, it's, it's actually not the worst thing ever, but when I was working on this, I saw sizes that were like two or three megabytes. I was like, what's going on? And uh, the, the, the users were uploading PNG files. So the thing about PNG files is the file size is a lot larger, but you also have an alpha transparency, so you can do like transparent parts in the images. But if you're not using that transparent part in your image, there's no point to do that. You're just making a larger file size. So we ended up fixing that just by going into Drupal and like disallowing the PNGs. <laughs> so it would just um, you have to upload JPEGs. Um, These are PNGs. What? The one is PNG. Uh, where's that at? The, the first one. one. Those bastards. They figured a way around. It. Yeah. <laughs> they must have fixed it. Oh no, this is a tile. So this uh, so I disabled the PNGs on the heroes up here. So these are the heroes. The tile uh, the tiles are down here. So which one is this here? So that one right there on the bottom. We should be able to we should be able to right click on you this. Right there on the screen on the Did bottom I? Right. I think there's a way to I don't know, open it or something like that, but yeah. Yeah, so the large so, so this is a problem right here. The largest image is way down here. You you're wasting they're wasting bandwidth. And I mean for the amount of traffic that they get right there, they're probably paying a lot of money for that. I'm not on the project anymore, so they're just gonna <laughs> <laughs> But um yeah, so Geez, I guess I missed a field, or they added a field and didn't do that. Um, yes, yeah, that's too bad. Oh well. So uh, a couple other things. Protocol HTTP one. If you go to HTTP like uh, two. Um, so you'll see protocol in here says it will say H two as it's. Hold on, let me refresh. Oh, they say H1. Say H2. Maybe it's doing the H1, HTTP2. It'll say under the protocol tab if you're using H2, HTTP2 right here, it'll actually tell, it'll say H2. And that's useful just to kind of know. Um, you can see your waterfall out here as stuff loads. And you can see what's dependent on stuff. You can highlight, you can mouse over and highlight it. It's pretty useful. Um, one of my favorite things that I like to do, um, let's go back to, like say, like for the Drupal camp right here. Go to the Network tab. You can click on this little video camera up here to capture screenshots. And um, let's say, let me reload. And you can see it's recording frames, and as you have like time for first byte, it will actually tell you how fast it is and what it looks like as you're going through. Mm -hmm. Wow! So, I mean, we're on a fast. I'm on a fast network right now. I'm on my. I'm tethering with my Wi-Fi, which is faster than the, you know, yes, network. Thanks. But um, it's useful. So like, you can click on mobile view up here, and I can I can say I want this to like have the same dimensions as an iPhone six. And I want wow. to, I want to add my network throttling. And where's my network throttling? Right here. Right here. So let's say I want to see what this website's going to look like in 2G. And it'll give you the time to fir first paint in 2G right here. 
It should be a good amount of time. Let's see what it looks like. Hot. So we can kind of look like right here. It might be some of this. this. Oh, there, yeah. So this is surprisingly. I wonder. Um, yeah. So it 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 took a little bit of time just to refresh. So at like two seconds in, we're we're getting stuff like this right here. That's actually pretty good for like 3G. You know, 3G is like slow as slow as all hell. So you can see right here. Font's not loaded. We have a custom font coming in from Matt Fontface. That's not loaded. This thing up here is from like Font Awesome. You know, that's not loaded. Um, and you can kind of see as stuff comes in up here. It looks like that background image loads seven seconds in. We still don't have the font loaded there. What is the difference between the Blue, the colors, it says uh, how long content loaded in a few seconds, and the red one. Let's um, highlight it and look. Uh, under that, in the text itself. Oh, right down here? Yeah. I think it's probably in there. Let's look at it. Oh, shit, it just closed up. Like a lot of times, if, there, if, if there's something in the console, it'll highlight red down here, like if there's an error message. Um, oh, sorry, I closed that. What's that? What's that? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the difference is, honestly. You have to Google it. Um, it takes over a certain amount of seconds or something. Does it turn red? Like over a Maybe. Okay. I don't know. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's see, we have, what, half an hour left? No. Five it's, minutes? Yeah, we'll go long. Yeah. Um, so let's go to the timeline tab. Timeline tab is my favorite tab. Let's go to the other side. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going, right now the page is already loaded, but I'm going to hit record and I'm going to start scrolling. So when you scroll down here, you can see stuff moves around a whole bunch. See all those? And it's all bound to the scroll event, so you can do stuff like that. It's not like toggling classes. And we can kind of hit stop. And I'm going to take a drink of water because this takes a little while. Now you have all this data, which looks really cool. <coughs> so <coughs> up here is... Um, your frames per second, and you can click on this, and it'll actually tell you what's happening right here. So I can so, so this down here is the flame chart, and you can see events that are calling functions that are calling other functions that are calling other functions that are calling other functions. A lot of these are some of the add stuff. So let's take a look at it. Should be able to double click on I don't know this one right here, and I can see what's happening. So once again, I have this long file coming in. It's coming in for, so this is a local file right here, it's advanced aggregation, which is a Drupal module that uh, puts stuff together. So, bam, here we go. So this is all minified right here. So a couple things that you're going to see up here is you're going to, because we ran on timeline, you can see the execution time for this. This JavaScript took um, a little over a second to execute, which is a long time. And once again, I pre-printed it. Now this is all crazy ass, um, you know, uglified, yeah. But you can kind of start looking at stuff a little bit there. Um, you'll see some painting events in here if I if if it wasn't so efficient. Like the painting is like really efficient on here because I did a good job. Um, but I can undo that. So what I'm going to do right here? Well, actually, do I have the yeah? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, a new rule, and I'm going to use asterisk, which is universal selector. So that's going to be everything. I'm going to say backface visibility, and I'm going to say visible, and I'm going to use the important tag. 
important declaration. And what that's going to do is that's going to undo a lot of optimizations right here. So, for example, let's get into that painting performance right here. So, as I scroll down, the whole thing is going to be turning green as I scroll. And that's basically like, it's referred to as a paint storm because it's joining the different regions that are moving and doing it. If I undo this, that should go away. Oh, wait, no. Not if I undo that, but if I undo uh, my... Uh, yeah, if you do that, it will go. Yeah. <laughs> Ta-da! If I undo this, now it'll, you'll just see occasional flashes like this. So this is like a little ad they, they, they put there and they didn't fix it, right? So there's no flashing there, but if I add this, now there's a bunch of flashing. So we can uh, maybe uh, re-record the timeline with uh, some of these painting events happening. By default, it's visible. Yeah, by default, it's visible, and and that's just part of it. So like, you don't want to just do, do like asterisk backface visibility hidden, because then you're um, putting everything on its own layer, which can cause its own problems because it eats up GPU memory in that in that case. So here we go, and you're gonna see in here, you should see some. Um, We should be able to see some painting events in here. Right here, painting events. And we should be able to kind of look, <coughs> figure out, I don't know if you guys can see down here, you can, you can get in here and you can explore, and this stuff kind of changes pretty frequently, but you can actually kind of see what's painting and what's rendering and stuff, and um, let's see if we can even figure out where this is coming from. I don't know. But a lot of times, it'll, like uh, in previous versions of Chrome, Chrome changes like pretty often. It would actually show a preview of like what's painting. And there, um, there might still be something in here like that. But, um, oh, the document root is painted because there's only like one layer. Does that make sense? Um, uh, does, uh, does this allow you to simulate a slow machine? An old machine? Yeah, yeah, it does. Right here, CPU throttling. Okay. And, and, and that brings up a really good point because um, not everybody has newer MacBooks like I do, you know? A lot of people are like my mom that have just like, she has an old computer from 2004 and yeah, I loaded up, uh, was it uh, Chromium? Like, uh, like the stuff from Chrome, Chromebooks on there as their OS so she doesn't continuously get viruses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. Um, let's see. There is a way to add a layers tab. So I'm going to go into the settings here, and you can go into experiments. Now, experiments by default, you're not going to see this right here. Um, there, you have to go to I think like Chrome flags. So there's a bunch of URLs that you can go to, and there's actually a URL called Chrome URLs. Maybe, yeah. Thought it was URLs. Chrome yeah. URL. Chrome dash URL. Chrome dash? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. It'll actually show all the, like, the cool things you can start messing with in here. So if you go into flags, um, you can enable experiments. Yeah, and uh, developer experiments right here, or developer tools experiments. You guys can't see this, I'm sure. Um, and if you can't remember that, just Google it. But uh, that will get you options within uh, here. So you can enable stuff like layers panel, which I'm going to show you, persistence 2.0, which is like if you're editing files locally um, and you want to do that through DevTools, if you want to use like DevTools as your IDE, I still don't think it's working uh, super great. So I have like, there's a little trick here that's, that's kind of funny. It's like kind of like a Konami code. With, you remember like the up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right? Mm -hmm. So if you hit the shift button six times on this page, it'll actually show you like more options. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 
<laughs> and you can even play with more stuff that's kind of hidden. So, like, some of the stuff's kind of neat, right? So there's a... Uh, why don't I see the... Um, it, it said I had the layers panel. I don't see layers up here, do you? It was over in the side when you clicked on it. More tools? Ah, there it is, layers. Right now, if you look at this layer, there's one big ass layer. So this is like with my de-optimization, right? So let's go ahead and re-optimize this. I'm gonna uncheck that. Now when I look at the layers, oh when I look at the layers panel, now, I won't even do all this moving around because it's so slow, but you can see like there's all types of layers in here. You ever see that? So I can like zoom in, but it's gonna be slow. Let's see. So, and these layers, <laughs> this is like pretty cool right here, right? It actually gives you a, a 3D visualization of your website's layers. As I start scrolling, they'll start moving, but it's gonna be slow as all heck. I just scroll. Let's wait ten minutes for it to catch up. So you can kind of see as, as as stuff happens right here. It's pretty neat. So like that's a cool way to visualize your layers um, and all that cool stuff. Like hopefully that helps out. Um, One of those checkboxes says uh, slow scroll rectangles. If you want to check that, would that speed it up? I don't know. A lot of the stuff you just have to get in here and uh, and screw around with. Yes. Oh, so this is you remove the paints. I should make it faster. Still seems to have a little lag. Is that the Z index? Is that what? Nope, it's no. different. It's yeah. like when I talked about the back face visibility hidden to promote it to its own layer. Yeah. Yeah. This is not a visualization of Z index. So, uh, more tools in here. Quick source rendering. Yeah, we looked at some of that stuff. Um, cheat sheets in here. Anything? Oh. So is anybody here use Sublime? Cool. If you do, you're gonna be happy. You can hit. You can use Sublime uh, keyboard shortcuts and Dev Tools. I hit. Yeah. I, I I can say like take me to the network tab. Or you know. What that like man cave? You can switch to a dark theme. Switch to the default theme and stuff like that. So I, the command I'm hitting is Command Shift P, and it'll open open up open up like the little thing. So if you can go to like I don't know console, show console or something like that. Clear console, and you, and you can do stuff like that. Like that's kind of cool. You can also use um, Dev Tools when you're in your sources or you're not. You can use a lot of uh, sub Sublime uh, keyboard shortcuts when you're in your sources panel. So, like, say if you want to use multiple uh, multiple cursors, right? So, once again, I'm going to pretty print this, and I can hold down the uh, <coughs> the command button to do like multiple cursors. Maybe not. Oh, I need to edit this. I don't know why it's not letting me edit it. Um, my under sources tab. Maybe because it's black box, I don't know. No, it's not. Um, if you're in here and it's working, let me open up maybe my web page here. Yes, so you can see I can edit and actually start editing this stuff. I can hold down the command key and have and have multiple cursors at this point. Oh. So you can do stuff like that. Or if I oh. or if I want to do multiple selections, I can hit like command D. And I'm editing all the bars. You can see like down here where it says seven selected reason, regions and all stuff like that. So you can do stuff like that. It's pretty neat. Um, did everybody see like some of the JavaScript debugging that I showed yesterday or should I bring that up again? Cool. And then we'll quit because we're I guess five minutes over. So JavaScript debugging basically what, what you can do is you can set a um, you can set a breakpoint just by clicking, going to the sources panel, clicking on you, finding your JavaScript, clicking. 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> clicking the cl clicking the uh, right up here to get the blue arrow, and then when I reload right here, it's going to pause. And so at this point, if I open up my console by hitting escape right here, I'm actually kind of I pause the execution. So wherever I am in here, I can like I, I can I can see where I'm at. So like if I, I I hit this button to go forward, I can actually type in drums drums HTML or all, all this type of stuff, and it'll actually tell me if it's um it'll actually tell me if it's fine. You can uh, you can step through by hitting this little button right there. If you're going into a function, you can go in and out of functions using these buttons. You can watch your call stack right here, which your uh, call stack, like, I don't know, that's not a good idea for this. Let me open up sci-fi. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a breakpoint on something. Select body, break on subtree modifications. This is definitely going to be subtree modifications. There we go. So at this point we can see like the call stack which is going to be basically everything that's calling everything right here. Um, you can see your local variables right here uh, and you can see your global variables. So these right here are of course uglified so you can't really it, it doesn't have much meaning but it'll give you an idea of what you can do. You can browse down through uh, different properties and prototypes to see what you can do against stuff. So right here, like you can see, we have a we have an uh, object of something or another, and you can see what's what's available and the properties of them, and then you can use that to uh, write your JavaScript and stuff like that. Uh, you can you can click up here and uh, set watch uh, variables or watch expressions or whatever to set variables or arrays or whatever, and as stuff moves through. Um, as, as, as your JavaScript executes and you step through stuff, you can see that as it's being changed. And that's pretty neat. It'll also give you an idea of the scope of things if it's defined. It'll actually tell you what this is. You know, who the hell knows what this is, right? <laughs> like if you, if, 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 if you stop your JavaScript at a certain point, it'll, it'll show you this, you know, which is probably like down here. Um, you can also just type right up here this, you know, so right now we're up executing all this crap up here. Um, yeah, so questions? So is there, you know, a source that has some of this cool stuff like documented? Yeah, so there's a Chrome developer tool documentation and there's courses for it, but, but it changes pretty often. Um, there's a couple of people on Twitter, like Paul Irish and Paul uh, Adi Asmani, that work for Google and Chromium, that will give out tips as they change. And uh, but the, the, I mean, Google's documentation is is decent. One thing that I wanted to point out too, I'm not sure if you knew this one, but this really helped me when I heard it. Yeah. Um, you write like elements and the element that you need. Uh, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I've used that a lot. And I know that's like one of my favorite things. I wish I had learned it earlier. You know. Cool. Yeah. 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 Ye